The story of Sheriff Buford Pusser is one that has captivated the public's attention for decades. Known for his tough stance on crime and corruption in rural Tennessee, Pusser's larger-than-life persona made him a local hero and national figure. However, the circumstances surrounding his untimely death at the age of 36 remain shrouded in mystery, leaving many questions unanswered. In this compelling tale of a man who lived and died by the law, we explore the hidden life and mysterious ending of Sheriff Buford Pusser. From his rise to fame as the inspiration for the hit movie Walking Tall, to the unanswered questions surrounding his tragic demise, this is a story that is as intriguing as it is tragic. Buford Pusser was born on December 12, 1937 in Finger McNary County. His father, Carl, served as police chief in the nearby town of Adamsville. Buford grew up to be an imposing figure, towering over six feet six inches in height. This physicality led to him being recruited for both the basketball and football teams while in high school. Under his father's guidance, Buford enlisted in the United States Marine Corps, but was unable to complete his training due to the diagnosis of asthma. He left the military and headed to Chicago in 1957, where he found work as a professional wrestler. His size and athleticism earned him a following, and he became known as the Big Bull or Buford the Bull by his fans. Even defeated a grizzly bear in a wrestling match, which only added to his notoriety. In 1959, Buford met and married the love of his life, Pauline. They had a daughter named Duana. However, Buford's wrestling career was cut short when he returned to Adamsville in 1962 to join the local law enforcement. His reputation preceded him, and he was quickly made constable and later police chief, following in his father's footsteps. In a town overrun with criminals, one man proved himself to be worth his salt. Buford Pusser ground up the corruption that threatened to engulf the place. When the acting Sheriff James Dickey died in a car crash, the department recognized Buford's dedication and made him the new sheriff of the county at the age of 27, making him the youngest ever to hold the position. From the moment he began his term, Buford spent his days actively working to eradicate the state line mob, a group involved in bootlegging, prostitution, and murder. He also went after the Dixie Mafia, who dealt in illegal marketing and drug supply chains. The criminals did not take kindly to Buford's efforts and made several attempts on his life. One of the most notable was Louise Hathcock's attempted murder of the sheriff. On February 1, 1966, she fired at him, but he fired back, killing her. Despite the danger he faced every day, Buford remained a hero to the people of Tennessee. However, the assassination attempts did not stop. On January 2nd, 1967, an unknown gunman fired three shots at him before fleeing the scene. But even with all the violence directed toward him, nothing could prepare Buford for the tragic events of August 12th of that same year. In front of his eyes, his beloved Pauline was shot and killed. The bull, as he was affectionately known, could no longer contain his anger. He went on a spree, hunting down the criminals responsible for his wife's death. His thirst for revenge became a legendary tale, forever etched in the annals of Tennessee history. Death of Pauline Pusser The sun had barely risen when the phone in Sheriff Buford Pusser's house rang. It was one of his subordinates on the line, informing him of a commotion on a side road. The sheriff was preparing to leave when his wife Pauline offered to accompany him. The couple drove to the location in their car arriving at New Hope Road in Tennessee. As they pulled over, another car pulled up alongside them. In a split second, bullets began to fly through the windows of the pusser's car. The hail of gunfire left both adults gravely wounded. The commotion drew attention from those nearby and the couple was rushed to a local hospital. The sheriff had been hit by two bullets that pierced through his jaw, requiring him to undergo multiple surgeries and skin grafts. After spending eight days in the hospital, he returned home to a devastated daughter and the absence of his beloved wife. Determined to seek justice for his wife, Buford named Kirksey McCord Nix Jr. the head of the Dixie mob gang as the mastermind behind her assassination. He hunted down those responsible for the attack, 
And on Christmas Day of 1968, Buford killed Charles Russell Hamilton, one of the men involved in the murder of his wife. Other members of the gang met a similar fate, with some shot to death in Tennessee and others found dead with bullets scattered throughout their bodies in Texas. Buford's relentless pursuit of justice earned him the admiration of the townspeople, who saw him as a hero. Despite the danger he faced every day, Buford remained steadfast in his commitment to keeping his town safe. He served as a sheriff until 1970, and then as a constable until 1972. Although his family believed that his death in a car crash in 1974 was intentional and planned, nothing was ever proven. As everyone else in Tennessee praised Buford Pusser's heroic deeds, Barbara Bivens, a publisher, stood up to voice her concerns. She claimed to know more about the famous sheriff than anyone else, citing reports from the FBI. According to Bivens, the report suggested that one of the men responsible for Pusser's wife's death, White, had made a deal with the sheriff. Bivens alleged that Pusser was involved in illegal activities such as human trafficking and drug trade. Her husband, Tommy, who was once a state liner, did nothing to stop the gangs from operating, and some believe that the sheriff only pretended to take action to distract from his own involvement. Bivens also accused Pusser of murdering Hathcock, who she believes was shot in the back instead of being involved in any plot against Pusser. In a shocking turn of events, Bivens even blamed Pusser for shooting his own wife and then trying to cover it up by shooting himself. The allegations left many people in disbelief, as Pusser had always been regarded as a hero. The FBI investigated the claims, but nothing substantial was ever found to support Bivens' accusations. Nevertheless, her claims continued to stir up controversy and debate about the true character of Buford Pusser. As rumors swirled around Buford Pusser's alleged involvement in illicit activities, his daughter Dwana vehemently denied them. She pointed out that the absurdity of the accusation that a man who killed his own wife would then blow off his own face to cover it up. While some dismissed the allegations as an attempt by publisher Barbara Bivens to profit off of her book about the state lines, others held on to them firmly. Despite the controversy surrounding Pusser, he has been immortalized in cinema and media and will undoubtedly continue to capture the public's imagination for years to come. As the story of the Tennessee Sheriff comes to a close, we bid farewell to Buford Pusser, a complex figure whose legacy will continue to be debated and scrutinized for years to come.